Mr. Clark, I'd like to call to order the Board of Selectmen meeting on January 28th, 2013. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business will be announcements. I have a couple and then we can uh, go around. Uh, just something that was posted in the paper the other day to remind citizens, uh, Oxford Support Our Troops is seeking help. Oxford Support Our Troops recently received notification that a medical unit they've been supporting has an immediate need for supplies. With the community's help, they are hoping, hopeful they will be able to fill this need. Please bring new sweatpants, sweatshirts, t-shirts, underwear, socks, blankets, towels, Batteries, both AA and AAA, to the Uxbridge Town Hall located at 21 South Main Street in Uxbridge. The clothing may be sized from men's small to extra large, but must be new. If you would like to contribute to this effort by making a monetary donation to help purchases these uh, to pur help purchase these items or to help with the cost of shipping them, please make checks payable to USOT and send them to the town hall. For more information, visit the USOT's website at www. Oxbridge support our troops dot org or like the group on Facebook. You may also contact Diane at 508-278-5131 or Linda at 508-278-9425. Thank you in advance for your support and help. Um, other related announcements uh, for this board and, and for the public, more on the technology front. Uh, we've been working to uh, Get a couple of things uh, easier to use on, on the internet side of uh, Town Hall. One, we've uh, created a general mailbox for all of the BOS members. I know people have asked me in the past, how do I reach you, what's your individual mailbox is. So now there will be a um, single address you can put in. It will distribute an email to anyone who's on the Board of Selectmen. It's uxbos at uxbridge-ma.gov. Uh, that went into effect last week, and I wanted to thank Justin and Cliff for their help in getting that uh, going for us. So hopefully that will uh, alleviate issues with trying to track down the right email address for Board of Selectmen members. Uh, secondly, um, Tracy has taken up a project on the corporate website uh, to help make the documents, um, specifically the bylaws and the charter itself, searchable. So within the Uxbridge uh, mass.gov website, there's a little search in uh, box at the top. Now if you want to plug in a keyword that's related to our bylaws or our charter, it will actually pull up um, the, the appropriate document. And then within the documents themselves, once they're up, if you want to do a search again within that document on a keyword, uh, it's a little bit easier to find and make your way through those. Um, so thank you, Tracy, for, for organizing that and um, working with Kelly to get that done. I think she had a hand in that as well, right? Uh, and then the last piece is, uh, a reminder um, on the technology side for video playback. Some people come down uh, asking Barry for, for videos of certain meetings, whether it's planning board, whether it's uh, board of selectmen, board of health, or, or whoever is being uh, filmed here within this room or in Lower Town Hall. Uh, Barry has a website up, uh, the cable committee has a website up called www.uxbridgetv.org where you can get a online stream and replay of any uh, video and uh, it's been pretty effective. I've, I've used it a number of times uh, all over the world, and it's uh, pretty accessible and easy to use. So I would encourage folks who want to to see a movie um, uh, or video of, of a previous meeting to go there and check it out. And then the last piece is uh, on February 6th, um, unrelated technology, on February 6th at 5.30 to 7 p.m., Senator Moore is going to be having office hours in town hall those of you that are interested in, in connecting up with him. So that's what I had for announcements. All set. Do you guys have anything else to add? Okay, great. Um, next on to Citizens Forum. How many folks do we have for Citizens Forum tonight? Just three, okay. Uh, order of attendance. Mr. Gallo, you wanna go first? 
just sign in so we can get it for the I was going to announce myself, but apparently you know my name now. <laughs> uh, my name is Kevin Gallo. I'm a resident of uh, Elmwood Ave. It's because I've been on that new Uxbridge uh, TV website. I get to watch all the replays of videos. I have to say it has come in quite handy, and it works quite well. Uh, before I get started, I do have a little something I'm going to hand out to the uh, members of the board. I will apologize. When I got here, I realized I was thinking four members of the board just left me and I forgot. So you guys can attend yourself. I'll be happy to email you a copy of the letter if you wish. Good evening. Thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to me here. Uh, my name is Kevin Gall. I'm a resident of Elmwood Ave. And to the members of the Board of Selectmen, I have a prepared statement here, and there's some backup data there as well. Uh, on January 9th, I spoke to the Planning Board public hearing uh, concerning the Evergreen Development application for a special permit to build and operate an asphalt plant here in our town. At that meeting, I raised the concern that our zoning bylaws and the definition of manufacturing establishment do not permit hazardous materials and further illustrated that the EPA, the CDC, OSHA, and a number of other agencies, including the state of Massachusetts, consider asphalt and asphalt fumes to be toxic and hazardous. I then requested that the planning board, that they deny the request for special permit on this basis and handed each member of the board a copy of my research, including the definition of the manufacturing establishment from the Uxbridge zoning bylaws and quotes and links to the state and federal agencies that list asphalt as hazardous. My request to, to deny, along with my request to deny that special permit. I have copies of this document which I've handed to you now. This request uh, of the planning board was never addressed during that meeting or any meeting afterwards. Uh, I believe that the planning board may have overstepped its authority by granting this special permit based on the fact that our zoning bylaws specifically state that the manufacture, storage, transportation, or disposal of hazardous material is not allowed in any zone as seen on page 76 of our current zoning bylaws. I respectfully request of <clears throat> I respectfully request that you as members of the Board of Selectmen put forth a motion this evening and vote to hold a special emergency meeting of the Board of Selectmen with the town's council present to review this matter and determine if the planning board has illegally issued a special permit to Evergreen Development. Additionally, should the town's council and you as the members of the Board of Selectmen find that the planning board has in fact overstepped its authority in this matter, that you take, uh, that you take any and all corrective action required, including, including legally filing an appeal. Thank you for your time and consideration. If you have any questions, I have taken the time to, on the next page, uh, quote our zoning bylaws and highlight for you the sections that I was referring to, the sections that I read at the January 9th meeting with the manufacturing establishment definition. I have then also uh, taken screenshots of page 75 and 76 of our zoning bylaws and if you take a look at them, it clearly states that manufacture, storage, transportation, or disposal of hazardous material is not allowed in any zone within our town. Now. Did you forget the words as a principal activity? Uh, actually, I took here the manufacturing establishment. Uh, are you referring to the uh, establishment definition? Not the establishment. The, uh, the initial bylaw made reference to the manufacturing storage, blah, 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 as a principal activity. That's correct. Is that, have those words been removed from the? Not from the quote that I have taken. No, oh, I took okay. screenshots of what is available, OK? But that is not actually listed on pages 75 and 76. It says, and if you want to flip to the second page, I took the time to highlight it for you. It says specifically, manufacture, storage, transportation, or disposal of hazardous material. It says nothing about it being a principal activity in that <coughs> line. And then the next, I don't know, five or six characters are all the different zones within the town. And it says no on every one of them. It does not say anything about a principal activity. It doesn't say anything about a little bit hazardous or a lot hazardous. Mm -hmm. It simply, simply states hazardous materials. The um, towns have authority to uh, have zoning bylaws, allow different activities in different areas and so forth. 
it's not uncommon for towns to prohibit certain things. It is virtually impossible to enforce an outright prohibition. Um, all of our automobiles, you know, we run on gas. Those are hazardous materials. We use them. The exhaust from every automobile, every truck is hazardous. It'll kill you. We have high pressure gas lines coming through the center of town. That's hazardous material. Um, I'm, I'm quite aware of I, all I of know, the other issues, I sir. I know what's in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. What I'm telling you is those bylaws are there in many towns that can't be enforced. We have a bylaw in a general bylaw that prohibits the sale of loom out of town. So if you have loom you want to sell it, you can't sell it out of town. We can't do that. Towns do not have the authority to control commerce between towns. We can't tell Koopmans they can only sell two by fours of plywood to people in Uxbridge. We can't do that. We can't mm -hmm. tell the supermarket they can't sell lettuce to people who live in Northbridge or, or Douglas. I, I can appreciate that, Mr. Bagnazarian. Um, I understand all those. I try to be a fairly reasonable individual. Um, however, when you've got a definition such as this, it does say no. My point here is that I raised this issue. It has not been addressed. You've actually probably spent more time talking to me about it than anyone else in this town or even paying any attention to what I've said. And I appreciate that. I really do. Um, but at the same time, simply not addressing it when their issue has been raised is not acceptable either. And, you know, you've got a very clear definition here. And I think that it's obvious that when organizations, federal and state agencies are involved here, which is why a DEP permit was required because of the hazardous material and fumes that are expelled from these plants, uh, it's clear that it's hazardous. Their own meteorologist that came in to talk to you about the air quality or came in to talk to the planning board to talk about it uh, referred to HAPS, hazardous air pollutants. You know, I think that's pretty clear. Um, when you're talking about asking somebody to sell or not sell loom in or out of town or lettuce at the supermarket, I think we're talking kind of apples and oranges with all due respect. Um, I understand that the exhaust on your automobile is is hazardous when it is, you know, in extreme concentrations. You wouldn't want to go around breathing it, and that's why, you know, some people commit suicide by running a hose into the car, right? Because it will kill you. Uh, my point here is that our bylaws say you can't do that, and I would like for it to be addressed. And I'm not asking you personally or any member of the board here to actually render an opinion on that. What I'm asking is that you convene with town's council to review the matter. The board doesn't have authority to direct the planning board. Uh, Which is not what I'm asking. Law and the, the charter says that the um, agencies of the town that operate under the control of the state government or state agencies, so to speak, uh, we, they have full authority. We can't direct them to do this or do that or not do this or another thing. I don't know that we have the authority to call a special town meeting and direct the planning board to address something that you feel they failed to address. I don't know that they're, they're obligated to address every question that is raised by people at, um, at their hearings. They have a public hearing, they, they, can, they listen to people, but I'm not sure that there is any particular obligation to address each and every comment made by, by people. Uh, Aggrieved parties can file suit in civil court asking that the, the decision be overturned or that it be not be enforced until there's a hearing in the court. That, that's something that people, individuals can do if they're adversely affected by it. But I'm not sure of the board's authority to do that. And I would be very hesitant to do that. Understood, sir. Right. I'll, I'll agree there was a huge mistake making uh, made on this issue because they had a vote to disallow uh, asphalt plants in the town and the, and the vote was never put into the bylaws and I don't know how legal it was when they changed the bylaws to leave it was left out uh, and I just don't know the legality if our bylaws are legal after that was left out, if 
if it wasn't legal, the case is you couldn't have a asphalt plant in Oxbridge, which I agree with him. Mm -hmm. And that would be my, I would willing to be, up, uh, I'm willing to listen to lawyers on that. Well, uh, the mistake being made. And well, I have, where's a, where's a legal <clears throat> I have and other members of uh, the Uxbridge community have retained a lawyer and a letter was sent to the town hall and to the town's attorney disputing the legality of the removal of the 1995 bylaws. That letter was dated, I believe, January 19th. And due to the town hall being closed on Friday and Martin Luther King Day, uh, I don't believe it was found or, or reviewed by anybody here in the town hall until the 22nd, that Tuesday. I don't remember seeing it. It was sent in, uh, it was a copy. Uh, was? To all of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so that, that was I, delivered. I, would, I, would be in the new, I'd be, I wouldn't be opposed to listening to both lawyers, not at all. I, I, I think that, you know, uh, I, just from a, um, as a town we should. I think we have the information um, relating to what he's asked uh, in this instance form. This is not an agenda item that we can act on tonight. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time rehashing uh, legal opinions between um, our attorney, the, the town, and ones the citizens have. I think there's a course of action, um, as I understand that uh, the, the community has been advised to with their team around an appeal and how they would potentially move forward with a, a, a challenging the legality of the bylaw um, that's been put in place. And then this here seems to be a separate if I'm understanding this, this is separate from that in the sense that it's, it's, it's targeting a different reason why it believes it's illegal. I believe Correct? there are two reasons Second. why um, the citizens and the town should be concerned here, yes. I believe that there are two reasons for an appeal, yes. Okay. There is the current zoning bylaw, which I'm discussing here tonight, and then there is the other legal matter. And if I, if I quickly understand what you're asking, you're asking the, the town to... Um, to move forward with the appeal process as opposed to the citizens. Is that the net? I am, I am asking you as the Board of Selectmen to get directly involved and talk to the town's council on these matters. Mm -hmm. What you do from there is going to be, I'm sure, derived from whatever the town's council brings forth. Okay. All I'm asking is that you get involved and talk to the town's council directly and find out what their response is to both items, actually. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to have a face-to-face -face meeting, too. With I would, too. I'm not opposed to that at all. Yeah. Because I'd like to know the legality of changing the bylaw. Well, we got that opinion. We did, yeah. From our yeah. lawyer, but... That's correct. That's right. But uh, the way it was done, we had, as you know, Peter, we had this big shot attorney that did it all. You know, it, was that, it... That's true, Bruce. But the vote at town meeting was that we town meeting had a document which comprised the new bylaws to be adopted the town adopted those with all any all the errors and you know misstatements and contradictions contained therein <clears throat> that's what we adopted and those bylaws were approved by the attorney general there's no connection between what existed prior to may of 2008 and what occurred after. That's not in question. That's not in doubt. I mean, you can I talk to a million attorneys if you want. It won't make any difference. I agree. But I'd like to know, I'd really like to know what Megan Dupree has to think of, say about this. It's nothing to do with her. Can you do it? You well, can't she change was history. the planner at the time. It doesn't make any but difference. We can't change history. We're kind of st stuck with the rules we have and we have to play within those I goals. agreed. She got up at town meeting and said, we're only changing the That's right. paragraph. We're numbers. not making any big changes. Does it matter what people say at town meeting? What matters is the language that's in the document. And that's why, as you know, at town meetings, I tell everybody, if you haven't read every single word carefully, do not vote for it. Because what people say has no bearing. And you can't change that. You couldn't carry on business if you, if everyone's opinion said it at public meeting had legal significance. I'm still willing to listen. I still like to hear too. I like to speak to the attorney also. What, what do you want to ask him? I want to ask him if the information wasn't available 
when they took the vote, how did they vote it out of the uh, bylaws? They didn't vote anything out of the bylaws. We they accepted I know, a I know. new they, they set of bylaws. They just changed everything. Oh, we got a new set. Th that's Without what we regard voted. of what that's we have. And, and that's what the opinion that said. specifically in his opinion. In his, in his letter. The Warren article essentially said, here are the new laws. If they're not in here, sure. even if they were before, anything that was a law before. It wasn't in there before. Repealed. It never got put into the bylaws. The it doesn't, no, no the it wasn't doesn't put in there. It was printed, that's the problem. It's about whether it existed as a law. Well, it didn't get printed, did it? That's right. And that's part of our issue, too, as well. Bruce mentions that there was a mistake made. We don't know exactly what the mistake was. Nobody knows. I don't know what the procedure was in 1995 for the clerk. I don't know how those bylaws were maintained. No one seems to know. We're going on 20 years now, right? Yes, clear, there was a mistake. We don't even know exactly what it was, though. But that letter clearly addresses the question you're asking. You may not like the, you may not, you may not like the answer. I'm not satisfied with it. All right, so. Yeah. so you can, but the question is how much money do you want to go and spend and how many opinions do you, oh, you want to get? Jeez. Give me a break. What's, what's the dollar amount you put on it? I don't know. Until you get the answer you like? I'd like to, I, can, I, can I add some clarity? Because I actually wait, do, wait, okay, uh, we, yes, sir. We're gonna just need you to sign in and then just declare, de declare your uh, name and address, please. My name's Joseph Frisk, I'm 85 Ironstone Road. It's Joseph. I've been intimately involved in this process for the last several weeks. Um, working with the South Uxbridge Community Association and some le uh, legal support so a number of attorneys who've actually taken a look at the opinion of the town council. I've also spoken to the town council regarding this matter. Our attorneys also spoken to the town council regarding this matter. Um, they were, their town council does have a very strong opinion, um, but also the residents of the town have a very strong disagreement. Both, uh, in the words of the town council, both are right. And the only way to get the answer is to bring that to litigation. So the town council has decided to, to take the position that it was a repeal and the residents of the town are, are, are trying to understand which one is the right answer. Because the motion that was made did not include the repeal, because the writing in the recodified version with comments said there were no changes to the prohibited use section, clearly. Comment, the comments made, even comments put in writing, have no bearing. Specific comments that were in writing, which were published for folks to read. Yeah. Uh, and then the last, of course, is the, the concern around due process. And no, I don't have the answer as to whether it's legal or not legal. Um, we have the opinion of the town council, and we have the opinion of the attorney for the residents of South Uxbridge. So I'm here at the Citizens Forum because I'd like to ask again, as I did last week, um, for support to get the answer. So we are- The most efficient way to do that is for the aggrieved party to file a suit with the court, and then you're not asking different people to give you help or trying to get the, the town involved or the other side involved. You look at it from your perspective and make the case to the court. Well, we believe because this is such an agree, such a significant issue or error, that it could really put some, you know, bad light on the town and, and potentially larger litigation. So, you know, from a perspective outside of litigation to resolve the issue, now we have a proposal of an asp asphalt plant that's with an approved. Uh, special permit mm -hmm. that could now bring even more litigation to the town, which was one of the reasons why last week I had asked. And yeah, I know we don't have. Is that this is not a judicial. I understand. Board, so we're not in place to decide. Uh, that's absolutely. exactly so, why we have a judge that I, can go I, out I, and I make agree. these decisions. So I, I just, I respectfully request that the, you know, the board of selectmen do reach out to the town council as well as I did. Um, and see if there's any other action that you can do to support the residents in the town. The other question I had to assist the residents who are also trying to do an appeal 
to, to get what version of the truth is reality. Um, and we do need some help. I, I know the decision was made on Wednesday for the special permit, but it has not been published yet. Um, it would help aid us in moving forward with getting litigation moving forward so we can have a court hear this or the attorney general. What, what would help you? Uh, getting the actual decision available to us. Oh, okay. It has to be signed by all the members, then it'll get stamped by the clerk. Yeah. So we just have to get. Perfect. I know we're on a time crunch, and that's why I wanted sure. to mention that tonight. Well, the appeal period does not start until the decision sure. is certified by town clerk. Okay. So the 23rd is not your starting point. It's going to be when it's actually delivered to the town clerk's office. Excellent. Thank don't, you. Don't, don't Thank you for that clarification. That. Right. <clears throat> you said you spoke with town council. I did. Do you remember the name of the attorney? I talked to Patrick Costello who advised me that he was only hired specifically to help with the opinion um, and was not in acting in capacity of a, an ongoing attorney for this because he had not been following it. Um, we had provided the attorney's letter for the residents of which he reviewed and said, you're absolutely, you, you, both of us have our, our opinions, I'm gonna stand behind my opinion, um, but that's exactly what I struggled with as well, was you have this just as strong of an argument as I do. And so, you know, the, the answer to resolve that would be reach out to the Attorney General. I know he sent his opinion to the Attorney, attorney General, but not in the, uh, to request, uh, you know, a, a mediation. Um, so his recommendation was, to, we were trying to get this brought in front of the land court before the planning board decision to try to prevent legal action from Evergreen Development to the town so we could try to protect the town we didn't make it in time to do that, so we're going to have to, of course, go through the appeal process. But I don't, I don't want to take up your whole meeting. I just wanted to provide some of the information that I had. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We're going in order, Mike. Were you, huh? We're going in order of attendance, and then Joe jumped jumped the line. But I was. Oh, that's okay. No, I wanted him. I'm glad he went first, anyhow. I, but you cut off a couple other people. I'm sorry? You cut off a couple uh, other people. Can I just ask you? Oh, oh I thought there were only three of us. No, no, there was, there was people. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's right. Go ahead then. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just didn't want to offend that someone in the oh, back. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Who's here a second? Okay. Uh, basically, just two simple things. Uh, uh, one thing I just wanted to ask that, uh, Sean a question uh, regarding a public records request that I just actually received something in the mail on Saturday. <clears throat> Um, I had done a public records request to the Oxford Schools Department, to the uh, payroll and personnel administrator there, and uh, basically um, I had actually heard that Mr. Petrillo had accepted a job at the school department um, or was basically an employee of the school department. <clears throat> so I was basically seek a public records request because obviously him, be I, I'm not, basically my question was is would there be any conflict of interest at all with first finding out when Mr. Petrillo was employed by the school department is, and also him being uh, chairman of the Board of Selectmen voting on any school department issues. Um, so Sean, do you, I'm assuming you received this letter sometime? The public records request? Yes. Yeah, the reason it got forwarded to me is because the payroll records and all that kind of stuff. Some of the information they're requesting is maintained by the town, Okay. not by the school department. Oh, so oh okay, well that's get, why I'm asking this <coughs> question. Was, Fisher has, I will get. Okay. From her, and then the stuff that I have, I'll get from my payroll folks, and I'll just. Don Sawyer e e emailed you, right? Saying that it had been turned. He, he, he sent. Well, well email, the only thing I got was just a letter, letter from him. Today, right? Okay, okay. Saying that it had been turned over to me. That's why, because I think I'm going to. The town, the municipal, the municipal side will have more of the information that you're looking for. Okay. The school, so we just decided. I just told him, why don't you just give me. I told him I would be the ultimate custodian of, of the. Oh, okay. So that it's not hanging out there in two spots. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that was the, the reason for asking because I was just confused why it was sent to you or whatever. That's all. Yeah. Okay. 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 That answers that. Uh, the other thing, too, uh, the second thing is, um, as you know, I, well, as all of you know me, I've been doing public records requests for many years. Um, I actually found, um, and this kind of sort of connects to the asphalt plant, I actually had a, mm -hmm. um, uh, an interesting scenario with our former town planner, Megan Dupreet, and uh, it turns out I have an email here that I found through my public records at home from August of 2007. Um, basically, 
what I was uh, finding out how Megan Dupreet and Joe Myers, the town manager at the time, how basically the town operated, and this is back then, not now, um, is I had actually, this email is actually printed from Nick Gazzaro, he was the former building inspector back then, and I had basically called him on the phone and asked him about, uh, I'm not going to describe what town department it was because um, I prefer to keep that off the low key at the moment, but basically a town department had built something and I called Nick Gazzaro and I asked him uh, some questions about this item that was built. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about, there's nothing there, and I said, yes, there is. So he actually took a ride, so I called him at town hall, he took a ride up and found out that uh, town department had built something. So he comes back and calls me back and he says, you're right, and he says, I just talked to Megan and she said they built that a year ago. So I said, well, I'm do I would like to do a public records request, and I'd like a copy of the building permit. So it turns out Nick Gazzaro, who's the, actually the building inspector, never even knew that uh, Megan Dupreet had authorized something to be billed without anybody taking out a building permit. So uh, two days goes by, and Nick calls me and says, uh, why don't you come down here? I got something for you. So I came down to the second floor of the town hall, and um, Megan was sitting, uh, she's the town planner, obviously, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jill Myers hired her at $70,000 a year, I guess. And so anyhow, so Nick tells me, or Nick had gotten in an argument with Megan Dupree in basically asking her why she had, why Megan had sidestepped right around Nick Gazzaro, the building inspector. And basically they weren't getting along, so... I approached Nick and Nick gave me this email that was actually forwarded from uh, Megan Dupreet to Joe Myers and it basically is a ranting and raving email where basically Megan Dupreet and Joe Myers basically talk about, uh, st st um, so basically what Megan did to cover her butt is she then sent an email to all the town departments saying you cannot build something unless you go through me to get a building permit and Nick wasn't too happy about that. so. Turns out Megan Dupree forwarded it to Joe Myers, and then Joe Myers sent it to all the department heads. So Nick gave me this email, and as Nick handed it to me, Megan Dupree jumped out of her chair and pulled it out of my hand, and I said, hey, give me that, that's mine. So I yanked it out of her hand, and her and I had a little verbal shouting match, saying that... Mike, where, where yes. are we going with this? Mention? Well, I'm just, in, I'm just informing that basically it shows... Well, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because Megan Dupree according to my information from the Board of Selectmen back from 2007 and 2008, was the, was the sole person responsible for the codification of the bylaws. And she's the one that apparently had the computer file on her computer and the one that was responsible for making the changes to the file. Okay. So what I think should be done, unless if the board hasn't, is is there any way to do a records request to find the original file that I don't know if it still exists back to 2007 or 2008, whenever it was done. But I'm sure somewhere either in the town, somewhere in the town's records, has to be the file from before and the file after. And I was told by the board of selectmen back in 07 and 08 that she was the re person responsible for all the codification changes. So here's the discussion about the asphalt plant, about well, stuff magically appeared, stuff disappeared. Well, maybe Megan Dupree would be the exact person to know where how the changes were made and where the stuff disappeared to. So so I'd like to turn this email over to the Board of Selectmen to keep a copy of it, because I don't know if it exists anymore, but it just it basically is public records evidence that shows that the town was playing, or I should say that Megan Dupree and Joe Myers were playing games with the citizens back in 07, 08 about the codification and the issue that I proved to Nick Gazzaro that certain people in this town decide to overstep other people. So. So basically how Megan and I didn't get along is she was uh, basically pissed that I informed Nick of something that she authorized and Nick okay. didn't know about. So that's all. all right, thank what you. was it that was built? I'm yeah. curious. <laughs> Tell us what was built. Tell us what, basically. Leaning Tower of Pisa or something? Well, it was actually a radio communications tower for the police department. And it turns out it was built at the Richard, next to the Richard Street, Richardson Street water tank. So the Richard Street water tank was built, and I drive by there one day, and there's a tower there. So basically, so that's why I called Nick Gazzaro to- Sorry, not to interrupt, yes. but we've got other people here for Citizen yeah. Forum, and it's getting snowy and icy out, so can we- Yeah. 
you so that's all. In private. But I had found out that uh, that Megan and Jill authorized the police department to build something and bypass Nick, and Nick had no idea till a year later until I informed him, hey, there's a tower there, and found out there was no building permit. Just, just to get the story straight on the codification, there was an attorney hired through a grant that did that. Oh, okay. Oh, through I can't town, call his name. Town grant or something? That <laughs> might explain oh, it. Amanda. Hi, Amanda Ayers, Murphy's Way. I will make Excuse this. Excuse me, could you ask me again? Ayers, A-Y-E-R-S. I'll make this very short and sweet. I'm just here to talk um, for a few minutes about the Coalition for a Community of Caring. Um, I don't know if you all remember last year in February, we did a project where we hung hearts on the trees in the town common. And I know that as selectmen, a lot of times people come to you and ask you, what's that? And sometimes you don't know, so I'm here to tell you. Um, it's a project called Hearts of Kindness. And basically what we do is we take a box of um, hearts and we put one in each school in the community. We also put one at OLV, um, one at the public library. And we're doing, um, a group of homeschool children in Uxbridge as well so they can participate. Um, and basically what the kids do is they write on a piece of paper an act of kindness that they've done for someone or they would like to do for someone. And so then it's kind of like a thank you to the community that we hang them in the town common just for everybody to see that we are a caring community, something nice and friendly and positive about our community. So we're planning on doing that the week of Valentine's Day. So I just wanted to bring your attention to that so when you see that you'll know what it is. Um, and just to let people know that um, where the boxes will be, if anybody has any questions, um, Allison Dwyer, who's the adjustment counselor at the high school, chairs our coalition. Um, and we meet the second Friday of every month at the high school at 9.30 in the morning. Our next meeting is Friday, February 8th, and everyone's welcome to attend. And if people have questions, they can feel free to contact Allison or myself. So the boxes that you take to the schools mm -hmm. contain the what the materials to make the hearts. The hearts are already made. We're already made. making them. Yep. Okay, and the children write thereon. They write on a piece of paper that goes inside the heart. Okay. Yep. And then someone collects. We go around and collect all the. And put them on the common. Okay, yep. I understand. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Very Thank much. you for your time. Just for the record, the attorney's name was, was Bill Bowski. I forgot his name, but I just remembered That's it. That's right. He wrote the book on Massachusetts he's, he's land the, planning. Yeah, he did it. On Massachusetts what? Land planning. Right. Which is, his book consists basically a reprint of the state laws plus some case law. He was For $75. And they put a new book every year and they want you to buy a $75 book. I have one of the books, by the way. Did I didn't buy, buy every new book. I was going to say, did you buy it? Yeah, just once. It was a grant given to the town. Okay. Anyone else for Citizens Forum? No. Excellent. Uh, moving on, then uh, thank you all for coming out for Citizens Forum. Drive safe. Getting home. Uh, old business. Bruce, you have a high school project update for us. Right. Uh, the next meeting of the high school, we have a joint meeting on the 13th of uh, February. And this is probably going to be one of our last meetings. Uh, they're trying to decide whether to put a the uh, press box or bleachers. They're leaning toward the press box and maybe a small set of bleachers. The work, the groundwork uh, for the, all the fields and stuff is done now until the spring. Everything's done that most of the punch lists are, are completed. There's not much left to do except decide what they're gonna use for the rest of the money. And that includes track equipment because Uxbridge never had a track. They had a track team, but they never had equipment to have a track meet. So they're gonna have to have some money for that. And uh, I think by the 13th, there's a meeting at uh, 3 o'clock prior to the joint meeting 
they're going to decide whether they want a press box or a press box and bleaches if they can afford it. Will the press box be sufficient for the New York Times and CBS and, well, and uh, CNN News to come down? It sure, it sure will. It, good, it's, good. That's uh, what we need that. The foundation has already been poured for it, so uh, they're just trying to get a good price on it. And, uh, and that's basically what's left to be done with the school. Bruce, if the last meeting is on the 13th. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be the last meeting, but it should be. What happens in the spring when they have to continue? To, who's going to oversee uh, the, the work in the spring? They still they still have to come back. Well, the spring is just the groundwork. They they stopped all the groundwork, mm -hmm. and they're going to come back. Over, is the committee going to get back together in the spring to oversee kind of the making sure all the groundwork gets done properly? I would think so. I would think so. You'll see that probably up in the March, early April. But as far as the money goes. It's basically after they decide on this press box or bleaches or whatever else they need to add and the, you know, the equipment they need, and that's gonna be it for the money. So we'll have a change order on the 13th, I know for sure. And that'll be probably for the press box, but I can't say for sure okay. what they have decided till they get all the prices down. And that's what we're waiting for now, all the prices. Basically, that's about it until until the spring, when we have our joint meeting. You can ask any question you want because that should be the end of spending all the money. Okay. Great. Thanks. Anyone else? No business on that. Okay. Moving on to new business. Uh, <clears throat> the first item in, in the pack and on the agenda is regarding the alcohol beverages regulation and enforcement and approval inspection fee. Um, ultimately what we're looking at here is we give out one day, um, often we award one day beer and alcohol licenses or, um, for different events um, they, they get approved and part of this kind of tightening down and, and unfortunately we had, there was an incident obviously this weekend in South America related to, you know, one of these um, five performances going awry with fire and, and such. Uh, this is somewhat timely in the sense that as we give out these, these permits for one-day alcohol licenses, we want to make sure there's a level of safety around the uh, access points in and out of the buildings that these events are going to be occurring to. And so that's one of the, the things that are being proposed here. Uh, as a result of doing that, there's a level of effort on our side to go out and inspect the places. Uh, so we're asking for a uh, inspectional fee associated with this when people submit. Which will be in addition to the ABCC charges? There is no, there is no fee. For the one day from ABCC. Do we don't pay, people don't pay anything for a one day license? So uh, the motion is for the board to approve the alcohol beverages regulation enforcement policy and approve the inspection fee of $25. Can I ask you a question just, uh, just before we vote anything? Uh, who's going out and checking this? Fire in the, fire. the building. Oh, okay. Chief Kessler's here if you want some specific, specific right. questions. So. Now some of these events are held outside, outdoors. Correct. And do we inspect outdoors? Chief, do you want to comment? Could you come to the mic? Sorry. There may be some uh, locations that have um, either tents set up or a pavilion, and I think it's good to, to still to inspect all of the, the locations just to ensure that there's not anything, any type of safety issue. There may be a, um, electrical items out there. I thought about trying to separate it, but there are, there could be some cases where there could be some situations we should review. So. Well, I, I agree with you. I just wanted to know who is inspecting. And what yeah, currently the building inspector and the fire department inspect every, uh, every location that has a liquor license every year. And that's through the ABCC, but if right. the one day permits don't go through, then there is no regulation that these safety uh, inspections need to be done. Well, I agree. Prevention is, you know, 
100%. Yeah, I don't have an objection except a cautionary statement that people who think that some regulation or some inspection regime is going to keep you safe, you're making a big, big mistake. Just by nature, if I walk into some place that's, that's not familiar to me, I make a quick glance around and I see where the doors are. I look around, see who's there, how many people are there, and think of what would happen if. Because we hear it every time. So this will never happen again. How many times has it happened? Uh, I mean, too hundreds many. of times. Too many. And it's always the same thing. People, you make the biggest mistake in the world if you think someone else is going to ensure your safety. No one else can ensure your safety. Sometimes even your best efforts don't ensure your safety. But it's important to be alert and look around and see what's happening. I can't imagine myself walking into a place that's packed full of people and I can <coughs> make an assumption in some cases that there are, some of them are high on alcohol or drugs and there's going to be extremely loud noise flashing lights that distract you and disorient you, and then someone's gonna set off fireworks and I'm gonna stay in that place? I don't think so. All you do is look at what happened yesterday. Okay, so uh, do I have a motion that the board approve the alcohol beverages regulation enforcement policy? And I'll make a special. motion that the board approve the alcohol I, I, beverage. I, I said so. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Bruce. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thanks, Chief. Uh, next up is a boot drive application. Uh, UHS Booster Club first. Hi, Maureen Stewart, Hunter Road in Uxbridge. And we are asking, um, I represent the Uxbridge High School Athletic Booster Club. We fund um, scholarships for our high school athletes as well as we do purchase some equipment um, for the student athletes to use at the high school and we do an annual fundraiser and this year we were seeing to if we could do a boot drive um, on March 23rd uh, we have three different locations in in the town um, and we we're just hoping to get approval on that how many locations three locations and they are uh, Savers Bank area the honey farms area and cvs okay. in that intersection there we have safety vests and only adults uh parents of the student athletes would be would be okay. you know out there i've gone through towns where they have these things and many times you're you're at the location and somebody has a the boot and you want to reach in and get some money but you don't want to hold up traffic so you keep going it would be helpful, and I'm sure it would improve your receipts, if you could have signs enough in advance to give people a little bit of notice so they can fish into their pocket for some money and they'd be ready to dump it in the thing and not hold up traffic. Yep, we could do that. I thought we, we had added that last year it to the form. It is added to the policy to it, post it signs. It is in the, on the, yeah. Okay. That's right. Do they flash and go up in there? <laughs> uh, so I'll entertain a motion that the board approve the boot drive for the UHS Booster Club for Saturday, March 23rd, 2013 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, we have two separate ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. One is from March 23rd for the UHS. Okay. Uh, Booster Club, and our next crew is, crew is for the Uxbridge High School Student Council boot drive on April 27th. Hello, my name is Mary Sherlock. I live on um, South Garden Street in Uxbridge, and I'm representing the Uxbridge High School Council. We're also requesting a boot drive for two locations. And your cause is for the uh, the prom? For the promenade, for safe, safe transportation. Because they all go to the prom together in um, coach buses. Um, I imagine the same comments from last time apply with the, as in regards to the sign would be helpful, which yeah. I think is part of the form anyway. We're also posting it in the common um, and on the Barry Giles website. Yeah. So 
people to have notice. Where are the three, lo uh, you're doing the same three locations? Just two, uh, well, I guess it just turns out the same, right, um, at Sabres and yep. at CVS. Okay. So I'll entertain uh, a motion that the board approve the UHS Council boot drive for Saturday, April 27th, 2013 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So Go moved. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. Okay. Um, the next order of business is regarding the order of taking and treat acceptance for Murphy Way. As of right now, Town Council has received um, a copy of all the final documentation for this. We have not yet received his approval um, on this. So tonight, um, due to time frames, I would like to ask the board to consider this motion to be contingent on Town Council's approval uh, as we move forward. Bruce and Peter, this one's been around for a while, yep. so yep. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with it. Yep. Murphy's way. Yeah. So I'll entertain a motion that the board approve the um, the board approve and endorse the order of taking and street acceptance plan for Murphy's Way contingent on town council's approval of the documentation. So moved. Second. In the payment of one dollar. Second. <laughs> Who made the motion? Bruce. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Thank you for your patience, Murphy's Way. Welcome to the team. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, town manager compensation fiscal year 2014 budget. Uh, somewhat related to uh, Peter's follow-up item that we'll get into more detail of the contract, but within the contract upon um, the first two years of, of the town manager's contract, let me find the language. It's on page two. Page two, yeah. The town agrees to pay the town manager an annual salary of $80,000 for fiscal year 2011. The town manager's salary will be prorated for weeks employed uh, through June 30th, 2012. The salary will be subject to applicable withholding deductions and payable installments in the same manner as other employees of the town are paid. The town hereby agrees to grant the town manager incremental increases of no less than 2% annually for the fiscal years 2013 and 2014, subject to a favorable annual performance review by the board and employment during that time. Well, that was, that's, sorry. Perf and, uh, favorable annual performance by the board. Um, so for fiscal 2014 budgeting, what they're uh, trying to get finalized now, um, Sean was given a favorable review. So uh, according to this, there's a 2% in increase on his salary. Which was already agreed to. Which is already agreed yeah. to, but it's not capped at 2%. So the discussion at the board, um, right now uh, would be if anyone feels strongly that that increase should be more than 2%, I will uh, open it up for discussion and entertain. But my view is that I don't, I don't normally favor guaranteed increases. Mm -hmm. And in, in my life, uh, the reward for having a favorable performance is you don't get fired. I mean, a raise is not something that is, and we, I, we need to get away from annual increases, increases all the time. We can't do it. Um, and I think it should be negotiated on a, you know, annual basis, but without thinking in advance that oh, we have to increase everybody's pay or people's pay. The only other editorial comment is, um, favorable um, 
um, performance should be more specifically identified in the future. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't change anything there, but I just mm -hmm. think some more about that. Yeah, and I think <coughs> excuse me, in the in the review itself, part of the motion when we went through the review was that this review would be favorable. Okay. Um, in hindsight, we probably should have pulled out this part of the contract and related pieces. Yeah. Um, just so everyone yeah. was aware of that. Um, but that, that's my opinion. Okay. But we are, you know, what's there now has already has already been agreed to, unless the board wants to change it. In my in my, I, I feel the same that you know this is the initial contract we struck. When Sean came on board. I think we hold to this to this contract at this time. I don't have a recommendation for a further increase at this point. Anyone else will care to comment or should we just move on? Mm -hmm. I didn't see a favorable report. That's the only thing. I, I thought it was less than favorable. Well, I'll, I'll send you the, uh, the packet yeah, and send the motion. Uh, actually, the meeting minutes are probably in the two thousand. I'll, I'll get you the meeting minutes as well because it's in the motion. I, I, I get a suggestion. We add that to the form itself. You know, maybe, like, I know what you're coming, what you're saying, Tim. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have a box that say this contract was favorable or not favorable. Well, that's what the motion was. The actual motion that we took at the end of that review was. It was that the score is favorable. Mm -hmm. Is that we view this as a favorable review for the town manager. Yeah. It was in the, the language of the motion. But we could, you know, if you want to put a box just to make it more abundantly clear. That's fine. Um, okay, moving on to the uh, the agreement itself. So uh, this is the follow-up from last week when we were in member issues. We were discussing, um, or sorry, as part of the agenda, I believe we were discussing um, as a result of the, the review, um, we noticed in the contract uh, an opportunity to play, uh, put in place some language associated with um, notification. The board decided we didn't want to do that. But in that review process, Peter had called out some specific things about the contract that he thought could, could be um, retooled. Um, yeah, I'm not looking for any action tonight. I did share this with, with Sean. Mm -hmm. there's, there's an error. Apparently, there's a line on the page one mm -hmm. crossing out there shall be a probationary period that, that shouldn't be crossed out because this was the original contract and there was, okay. in fact, a probationary period. Um, I just made it more specific that it's not a contract of a definite term. Mm -hmm. But take it, you know, take it home, read it. Um, and after re looking at it more, Sean may have some other. Yeah, my take on it uh, was that, after, I just did a quick glance of it, was that th there is more for the purpose of, we know when the next town manager comes, they pick the last one. Mm -hmm. And if there's ways to sh sharpen this up, which I think you've done, Peter, in, in a lot of different areas, I don't think there's any material changes no. to the contract, but I think it just kind of clean does some house cleaning so that yeah. um, if it's ever to be reused again, they're using a better version of, of what's here and um, reduces some redundancies uh, or eliminates some redundancies and um, <coughs> uses stronger language. So Peter, your recommendation is that we just, we'll, we'll sit on this, review it, and then um, on the next meeting, we'll take a vote that we'll ask Sean to consider these changes because ultimately there's two parties to this and even if the board decides we want to go forward, it doesn't mean it's changed. Well, hopefully, and I've given Sean a copy of it, mm -hmm. so hopefully he can add his viewpoint too because remember the charter says and he's he's supposed to be an active participant, participant. Yeah. okay sound reasonable sean it does <clears throat> make sure that you don't leave any heavy things that you can throw at me you know or us yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not that <laughs> deeply cut so uh yeah everyone will bring their comments we'll add this onto the next agenda um But very good. Thank you, Peter, for uh, following through on this. Pretty much appreciated. Um, 
next order of business. Uh, next order of business is the fiscal year 2012 BOS annual report. Tim, let me not steal your thunder. The, the, this is the this is the jewel of the <laughs> clerk position. Oh, this, is, I this defines your. Well, there's a uh, few areas in it that need some straightening out. So uh, I plan on doing that this week. Okay, so we have, what's the deadline for when this is actually due though? Second, second of February. February 3rd. Third. So typically the board votes to, so are we asking to allow you to have liberty at this between now and the second in, in, in good faith that you represent? I'll email it before I submit it. My, the only comment you. I have uh, is on the second page, it, the first paragraph, is the board supported a variety of zoning instruments. This is a brief overview of the accomplishments of the board. And when I read the, the um, text, the accomplishments are mostly uh, you know, ministerial functions that, that we do. Mm -hmm. To me, an accomplishment is if I climb Mount Everest, um, in the middle of the winter with, with a bathing suit. That would be an accomplishment, <laughs> you know? Uh, but I, I, you know, I shy away from, you know, fluff a nutter type things as, as um, visual. Yeah. Tim, did you want to let the board know a couple of things you were considering to add to this, re to this report? Pardon? Did you want to t let the board know of some things that you were considering to add to this report? Yeah, I was going to add the, um, the uh, fire at the poorhouse because that was a landmark that went down and two people perished in it. Um, was that FY12? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. was. September. Of this year. Of 12, yeah, of calendar year 12, yeah. which is FY13. Yeah. Oh, so no, that's, that's, that's FY13. That's FY13. So that would not qualify. Oh. It was September, I didn't realize. Yeah, we got to rewind. And there's a couple of other things that we wanted to add as regard to uh, people who have been in town. I know that we can't dedicate books or anything like that, but there was one time when they put in pictures and, you know, just described people who had passed away a shot. That's sentence. right. I remember that. Right. Yeah. And I thought I'd, we'd do it at least for Timmy Creighton and uh, some of the other people in town that have passed away. I think that's a good idea. And what are you going to get? You to make up the list? Pardon? You're going to do the list? Yeah. Because I wouldn't know how to do it. No. I'll make up the list. Okay. You can get it from the town clerk. Yeah, we can get the list from the clerk's office. Yeah, the town clerk will have it. Okay. But other than that, I think that those were the only additions. Correct? Right. So with that said, the board could look at this to approve as amended or discussed if I, they would I, like to. I have complete confidence in Tim's literary genius. <laughs> so I'll entertain a motion that the board approve the fiscal year 2012 BOS annual report as amended by Mr. Rice. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? I can right. second my own. All opposed? I abstain. <laughs> uh, let me see the car facts. I, know, I just don't like the word accomplishments. Well, I, I don't care about the pictures. All right. We'll get rid of that for you. Okay. Um, next on the list is the... Uh, High level timeline for spring annual town meeting. So I've received quite a bit of criticism over the board's ownership process. Um, I don't know, 
overall nurturing of the fall annual town meeting right. um, to the point that it's, it's quite embarrassing. Uh, so one of the things that I want to make sure of in the spring town meeting is that we are on top of the timeline, the schedule, the actions, and the responsibilities of that warrant. And I've opened my big mouth and made a commitment to a resident that we would be doing that. So I hope um, everyone here is in agreement that we should be uh, more thorough and diligent in this one than perhaps uh, we were in, in the last one. So as part of that, I, I asked Tracy to start to outline uh, some of the, the key dates and then uh, as part of that Peter had some follow-up items um, from last meeting associated with some things that are specific to the um, to the election process which kind of kind of sort of kind of fit into that same uh, weave of a schedule between here and um, the end of May so what I would like to do is go through that and this is a chance for the public to become aware of what some of these key dates are that we're working towards. Uh, but most importantly, Tracy, I'd like to see if we can get a calendar, a published calendar that we can put on the website um, that's specific to these activities that are related to the, the town, uh, the spring annual town meeting, as well as the, um, the, uh, the spring election, or the annual election, rather. Uh, so just at a high level, Tracy, you want to walk us through just the, the initial dates that are, have been identified and we'll talk about some of the special pieces. Okay, so basically we prepared the timeline for the spring in town meeting. On February 25th, the Board of Selectmen will set the closing date and let the, the um, public know that articles um, for receipt, the deadline date for the warrant that closes will be March 15th. Um, Prior that, to that, there's a couple of administrative functions that the office and staff will um, work on and bring to the board's attention. Um, the first draft of the warrant is anticipated to be produced March 18th. Projected financials will be completed approximately April 22nd. And the first draft of the warrant is anticipated to be submitted the first week of May in town meeting will be May 14th. Final, yes, thank you, yeah. Um, with that said, a couple other key dates is, and this is all in your packet, um, the, the election is May 21st, and another key date to get the um, ballot questions to the town clerk is April 16th. Um, so basically, at the selectmen's meeting on February 25th, that's we'll set the closing date and um, reach out to the departments internally So, I, I, I have a sorry. question before you maybe you want to go on. Sure. Uh, uh, being February 25th, the date for receipt of the articles, in house articles. Now, when we receive an article, can't we put that on the website as soon as we receive it, no matter where it comes from, so the people out there can see it as they come in? If it's a citizen's petition, the clerk needs time to certify those signatures. So that, d that can't happen immediately. But if it's an article that um, is voted by the board to be placed right. on the article and right. it's in the house, then certainly. As a matter of fact, that's what we do. That's that. what we're supposed to do by law. And that, that's a lot of the criticism that we get from residents are from the lack of awareness of that particular fact that there will be multiple versions of the town meeting warrant published simply because the law calls for it. Anytime there's an addition, anytime a new warrant article is, we publish it. It gets posted, mm -hmm. so there are there's a there there are some folks out there who would like to see the warrant close one day and then no nothing no published warrant until that final warrant. The problem is is that the law calls for us to publish all these interim drafts, mm -hmm. right? Which does it cause confusion? Possibly. The the thing people just need to keep in mind is that no warrant is final until. What, what's that last? The end of the May 5th, May 6th? What, what yeah, is the it? First week in May. First week in May. You have a little time. The date to be determined by the Board of Selectmen. So any warrant posted, viewed by the public prior to that date is to be considered a draft. A draft. Yeah. So let's make sure that we, we watermark. That final warrant is also going to have the FinCon's uh, recommendations on it, too. Absolutely. Right? You'll have everybody's, yep, yours and, and, and the 
been been gone. So, so as you go through the timeline, you'll you'll see <clears throat> the dates and the process that how, how it flows. The 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 areas where you see like a line, those are maybe areas where the selectmen is going to have to call or hold a special meeting just to fit things in accordingly. So, so can we just start at the top? Because I, um, I think that was a great point, Bruce, in making sure once, that we once, do that. Once and we get they that are checked on out, I think it should go on the website. Once the uh, signatures just is checked, checked out, checked and out. anything internal. Right. So, so right. we want that living document posted up there. Just, I think we got the. We didn't really have the capability until we got the new website in. I think we can do that much more efficient, effectively this time around. When does the door warrant open? Last. We posted. Um, okay. We, we did that last fall, so great. We should. There's no reason not to continue. Technically, the warrant's open. And then. Um, really, the closing date warrant closes 60 days prior to town meeting per the charter, which is March 15th. So it has to be the 15th because that's a Friday. Exactly. Right. Right. So we will have Friday. we will have staff on the Absolutely. 15th. So it opens again. What was the date? It's open. It's, it's, it's open. Really open. It's open. Now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three two twenty five. Yeah, people should be so really encouraged to submit warrant articles really whenever yeah. they want. I mean, right. it's when, which, whichever, you know, if someone included, someone, a, a, per, a resident could submit an article two days before fall town meeting, it'll still be entertained, but not until all the spring. So while, while deadlines are important, certainly for us, um, you know, residents should certainly feel free to submit ideas whenever they have them. And for those who are talking with the asphalt plan, I would assume that would you get should be organizing right now to get your article together to make sure we hit all the deadlines, so. Because we know there's one possibly coming. We don't want two. You know, that's the way I feel. I don't want two. I don't want one, but, you know, um, we definitely don't want two. We're going to post this outside. I know you took the wooden board down for the outside bulletin board. No, we post them at the Close library at the senior center at, and downstairs in the lobby and on the website. Are you are you asking the articles or the warrant? With the schedule. The warrant. Oh, it's, okay, yeah. Right. That's correct. It's just that these uh, these stores aren't open, but uh, three days a week or four days. Yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. All right. I don't agree with it, but that's all right. You don't agree with. I think the I think the warrant should be outside. Oh, what about the, the highway garage? Do they still put it down there? Mm -hmm. And that's outside, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. We do have the warrant. We posted on that yeah, the glass the box, board yeah. at the top of the stairs. Uh, it doesn't have the article. I think that that board's warrant. gone, right? Yeah. I think the board's gonna be. Oh. That's not. That's they what just, I was talking about. They took that board down when they repointed the building. Well, they did. Yeah. Are they going to put it back up? There was no plans. I mean, everything it hadn't been really used in a long time. If you looked at the dates. <laughs> okay. So where where are the no, posts? We did, we did use that. Yeah. I'm not saying it hasn't been used in ten years. I'm just saying it hasn't been used recently. There's no key. There was that. They were having difficulty opening and closing. It, the frame of the thing itself was deteriorated. Yeah. Okay. So, so where do we post now? Physical copies. On the on the interior bulletin board, everything's posted and here. The library. And oh, the library, the library. city center, DPW, the post office. Yeah. The copies are available. It's on the town's website. Um, Now, there is one place in town where it's open 24 hours a day. Oh, mm -hmm. PD, and it is available at PD. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. Yeah. Honey Farms. You print copies of it. We don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> open 24 hours. There you McDonald's, go. McDonald's, think, on Quaker Highway. It's got a 24 hour drive through. Yeah. Um, prepare a memorandum to BOS for consideration of the articles by the BOS to place include an alarm. Tracy, can you explain what you mean by that? Okay, so when, when you start receiving um, mm -hmm. articles from in house, it could, it's up to the board if it's not by a multiple member body that the board placed the articles sure. on the warrant. And that's a time that you guys can start taking action on that mm -hmm. in advance. Um, and then 
we'll take that in some information under consideration whether you chose to place these articles and get an updated version for the board showing the changes and the del deletions and so forth. And um, what's the who's preparing the memorandum? Like it, when you say prepare mem memorandum, who? It's basically who? the town name. manager the name. seeking out Sean Hendricks is preparing a memorandum to all the boards and committees if you have any warrant articles and so forth. Oh, so it's not to the BOS but to all boards. Yeah. And then we'll compile that information and prepare that memorandum to the boards. These are the articles that came into the office. Okay, I understand. Okay. I, I, so what you're saying is by 311, the town offices need to submit their material to Sean Correct. so that the board can review it. Yep. Got it. All right. I was just confused by the wording. Okay. Warrant closed on 315. First Any other questions on, on this? Are we missing on the, sh the sheet itself or just that item? No, no, no just uh, keep going on the sheet. Okay. Yeah. On that, yeah. No, no more. Uh, I had no more questions on 311. Are there any other questions related to the schedule itself and the milestones that have been identified? Uh, at the Dates for when things are due, like the school department, is 75 days uh, ahead of time. And capital planning is like 150 days prior to warrant. So I don't know if that should be on here or. I'm sorry, what was that, Tim? I didn't hear. What's that? What was that? Uh, the uh, budget for the school should be here 75 days before the closing and the capital plan and should have it in 150 days prior to the closing according to the charter yeah is that the town manager's report you're referencing the capital plan no the capital planning committee right the capital plan has to be submitted january 31st right to the town manager no, no. to the board oh, okay. the capital plan is submitted to you by january 31st so that's why 150 days Okay. So the budget doesn't, the school budget wouldn't need to be in as early as the capital plan. No, no, that's 75 days. The school. So what was the question? I, I missed. Yeah, I'm not no, I was just making a statement that the, these are the date. It has to be in so many days yeah. prior to the closing of the warrant, but it's not indicated on here. That's all. I just didn't mean to throw a monkey oh, wrench okay. into it. No, no, it's, I understand what you're saying now. <laughs> But everybody got the capital plan last week, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Not that I agree with it. I got okay. it. <laughs> so the board needs to set specific dates for uh, FinCom, US FinCom, plan, uh, planning board commencement hearings. Yep. If it's applicable. If it's applicable. And we won't know if it's applicable until we get all the articles. Until March 15th. That's right. All right, can we, can we get a schedule, a calendar to kind of put this on that doesn't have anything but this, this schedule and we'll, yeah. we'll um, mm -hmm. figure out the best way to distribute that, whether mm -hmm. it's to put it on our BOS page so people are aware of it. Sure. Okay, so that's related to town meeting. On the election side, we had uh, one of the follow-ups that Peter was uh, helping with was looking at Two things related to this upcoming election, uh, and Bruce, you looked at it as well. I looked into um, it. Has to do with uh, the first one has to do with sorry, um, civil service, mm -hmm. and so as far as the election date goes, five twenty one is the key date uh, for the election, which means the four sixteen is the drop dead date for the um, ballot questions. Yeah, to the clerk. Yeah, to the town clerk which means anything that has to be uh, reviewed legally um, or has a time sensitive date to it needs to be relative to this 521 date. So one of the things Peter asked you to kind of look into is with civil service as a, um, are there any special requirements related to it as it comes to our election? I know that there was a question of how it got in place. It has to be repealed in the same manner. So do you want to add anything to that and make That's it work? It. <laughs> That's it. So there's, 
At this point, we know that it was voted in on a by an election. By an election. Yeah. Um, so the only contingency on the schedule is making sure that it's been in and reviewed by town council prior to submission to the town clerk on 416. I don't know anything different from that. Okay. And, and Sean had done the same same research. So, so we're we removing the department from the civil service or the police chief? A police chief, as I understand. Chief. Well, the question to the town will be whether to remove just the chief. Yeah. And the board needs to vote to make that a ballot question, which we would have to do prior to um, 416, so probably on the... March 18th. That gives us enough time to have council review the language yeah. of the ballot question. Mm -hmm. That would be ideal. Yeah. Board make um, The town clerk was able to go on Google and pull up the, the new police website, the new and improved website doesn't have the history. The old police website site has the history mm -hmm. of when that was done. Okay. Um, but I think she said she couldn't print it. And I don't know, um, I didn't try going on Google for it, I just found that out later. Um, I don't know if the blurb on the police history site had the language, <coughs> the actual language or not. We ultimately found it in the, looking through the town reports. Oh, she couldn't find it when I... No, I think that's how we found out. That's how we verified the year that it was done. So, okay. um, I'll, I'll dig through my reports. Okay. So we have it. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll have the exact language. Yeah, it's it's used at the time to adopt. Yeah. Okay. There's another website called the WaybackMachine.com too. Oh yeah. I can recall the site exact. Bring back the site exactly how it was in the year, in the month, and the day. Oh. So if you knew it was on there in 2002. You could go right there. So another resource for you there. That cloud that has all this information is going to become so heavy, it's going to fall on the <laughs> earth and destroy everything. Uh, yeah. Before you get away from this, um, I'm not I want to go to back to the, the warrant article. Yeah, okay, go. Okay, Th that thing on the bottom of the page, the warrant will include a line, who initiated the article, formally sponsor, and a line who requested the article. Now explain the differentiation here. This is what the, this is what the board voted on. Yeah, when we, I believe when Howard Fortner came in. Voted on that two meetings ago? Yeah, it was only like two meetings ago. And had, we had a issue with sponsor. Yes, a discussion. I, re I remember that. But look at the charter. Section seven, initiation of warrant articles. And then A, it says initiation. And those are the only two places the word initiation is used. The Board of Selectmen shall receive at any time petitions addressed to it which request the submission of any matter to the town meeting which is filed by any elected board member from the board and so forth. Mm -hmm. So if something is given to us by, um, the, the moderator, for instance, who is an elected official. Yep. It, does he, is he the initiator or the person who requested the article? He is the person who requested the article. Okay. So now, so who's the initiator? The Board of Selectmen. Why? We didn't initiate it. Onto the warrant we did. It, that's, not, that's different. That's covered by here, inclusion on the warrant. The board, only the Board of Selectmen put things on the warrant. Mm -hmm. They come on the warrant either by action of the board or by Bidding. petition. Yep. This, this section of the charter should be redone and I've recommended changes but they didn't, they didn't see fit to include them. But the, the basic thing is, there's people who say, well, um, Joe Jones initiated it, but Tom Jones uh, requested it. 
I thought when we, we had spoken, initiation was either going to be Board of Selectmen or Citizens Petition, and that the, um, the requester was the group and or individual who was requesting and became a, was a subject matter expert. That's what we discussed at, at this meeting. Yeah, I remember that meeting. And it, I, it was when I, at that time, I thought it was kind of muddled. Because you and I can be talking mm -hmm. about maybe we should put an article for it. Let's forget we're on the board, so just people. Yeah. And so, and you say, okay, you'll do it. I'll talk to Bruce. Yeah. I'll talk to Bruce for so us. Who's the initiator and who requested it? You know, anybody can request anything of the board. Mm -hmm. Right. By an article. They can come to the board and say, hey, fellas, I'd like to have you sponsor an article in the warrant, put an article in the warrant to rename Friday and make it Saturday. Mm -hmm. And Okay, but if we put it on the warrant, we are putting it on the warrant, but the person who is sponsoring the article may be somebody different. And we may, in the past, I can tell you that we have had uh, department heads wanting an article on the warrant. And sometimes the board said, no, we won't put it on. Other times we've said, well, we don't agree with it, but we will give you the courtesy, we'll do you the courtesy, we'll put it on the warrant, and you can make your case at town meeting, but we want you to know that we're not in favor of it. Yeah, right. You see? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how it works in reality. <coughs> so what, what would be your recommendation? Well, I don't want, I don't want confusing phrases. Mm -hmm. um, spawn, the word sponsor in the dictionary has a specific meaning. It means we approve of something. You know, we, we endorse this, we approve of it. So, you know, a sponsor of something can be, I sponsor somebody to be an Eagle Scout mm -hmm. or to receive an award, you know, and I'm gonna be the spokesman to convince you to give this person the award. That's, right. that's normal, that follows the plain language of the, of the word. But it's the board who approves, who actually puts things on the warrant. So up until the final publishing of the warrant, after the board has made its vote on it, that sponsor would be blank. Because the Board of Selectmen may have put it on the warrant, but we, until we take a favorable or unfavorable action against that article, we wouldn't necessarily be the sponsor under that definition, That's correct. right? That's correct. We may put it on. You know, even though we're required to put certain things on the warrant that, doesn't mean we that we may not agree with, but we're required to put oh, it yeah, on. Oh, I that includes it. petition articles and people, articles submitted by uh, different boards. Um, but other articles, we, we exercise our discretion. I don't have a strong opinion on what we use, so I'm uh, open to suggestions. And it's, if you read the first part, initiation, the Board of Selectmen shall receive at any time petitions addressed to it, blah, 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 blah. And then down below, inclusion on the warrant, we have to include on the warrant things received 45 days or 60 days in advance. So we shall receive articles even five days before the warrant is published, but we can't put them on the warrant because they don't fit the timeline. And that's another thing that doesn't make any sense. Well, why don't, why don't we think about it, and uh, at the next meeting, we'll be definitive on, on what we want to put on that. And while we're <coughs> on that particular area, I know some of the other controversy that surrounded this particular paragraph here is um, the fact that the board has included on the warrant petitions from non-multiple member bodies. I want to make sure we're continuing the perception, the interpretation of this particular part of the charter by the town was these are three ways articles can make it onto the warrant, but they're not exclusive. No, no, th those are three ways that things must receive. be on the warrant. They, they must, must be on put the on the warrant. But this is, but, but pe folks have interpreted this to mean that the DPW director cannot himself submit a warrant article. That has been some public. Anybody criticism. in the world. Right. In fact, no, no, no. People from Mars can land here and say, I'd like to submit this article for the warrant, and then the board has to make I a decision. I just wanted to discuss that in yeah. public because this is, has been 
there's been criticism leveled at the board because it doesn't understand what I want to make sure that everyone understands that the board doesn't I, I understand no what yeah. it do, does understand what yeah. this, what this part of the charter means yeah. okay so we'll take an action to to tell us we must go to the movies on Tuesdays and Thursdays doesn't prohibit us from going on Mondays and Fridays right now the warrant is going to say these two lines based on our meeting minutes mm -hmm. um, yeah. who initiated it and who requested it so next meeting come with a proposal for a change and we'll vote it on okay. uh, last thing on on the on the dates and I apologize we have I thought you guys were in the crowd because they're you, gonna here for something I have to mention to the board oh, okay during my time no minute oh, okay okay so We'll try to finish this up so we can get to their issue. Um, the uh, the second piece of the timeline is the election. So the election is 521. The drop dead date is 416. The other thing, Peter, um, well, before we get to you, is Bruce. I asked you to, to investigate an item related to um, the upcoming elections. Uh, yeah, when papers can be pulled and, and if there's any issue or process that the community needs to be aware of regarding discrepancies in term with the upcoming Board of Selectmen election. The papers, the papers will be pulled the second week of February. You can pull papers on the second week of February. Right, they'll be out. And as far as what you asked me to look into the Selectmen mm -hmm. positions, mm -hmm. there'll be two three-year terms in one two-year term when you file for paperwork you're going to have to file whether you're going for a three-year term or a two-year term that's what i got from kelly two-year term there's one two-year term so peter's position is a two-year term not a one-year right. term. it's a two-year term and there's two three-year terms oh great okay so that's more of an announcement uh We'll add that to the beginning of the next meeting just so people are aware of it. Discuss that with Kelly and that's what she told me. So it'll be two three year terms available and one two year term. And I don't want to speak on behalf of the board, but at least for myself, um, if anyone's interested in understanding is debating running and understanding what the position is, I'm happy to share my experiences, um, unbiased experiences with it. And expect that you guys probably would too, right? Uh, okay. Then the the last piece of this is had to relate is related to the charter, uh, and so Mass General Law forty three B section nine ten eleven. Um, there are specific timelines and dates uh, related to the election. I think that's really called out in section ten. Peter, in your review, did you find anything that we need to um, be concerned about regarding? Well, a decision has to be made whether it's going to be one question mm -hmm. or a number of questions. Okay. And just it, looking at the changes. Um, is that something that the Charter Review Committee decides or is that something mm -hmm. the board decides? The law doesn't specify, I don't think. No, I think the Charter Review the c committee I mean m in much much in the same way uh, the Charter Review Committee sort of decided how it was going to be presented at town meeting I think the idea is that the committee itself would decide how they how it wants how it wants to form because remember it will submit its questions to the board right so the well, board this doesn't is the second part of a of a vote isn't it so wouldn't it appear on the ballot the same way it appeared at the town meeting that's an election but it could it, that's one way to do it it's not the way it does doesn't have to be that way no it doesn't stay it doesn't, doesn't stay. have to follow the same way okay all right the town meeting just adopted it on i think they're leaning that way because they want to make sure that they would almost i think the discussion was it seemed that they would rather have more than one question mm. just to make sure it it was more important at town meeting when the actual changes were being discussed i believe that's definitely why I wanted to be, I think that was the theory behind separating it at town meeting, although now that the discussion has happened, the more public discussion, you know, I could see them just going to one question, but, you know, I think it just depends on how much. I would prefer that, 
myself. The, the danger of putting up, dividing it up into multiple questions is that you get some approval yeah, and some. So some won't, yeah, a mishmash. Yeah. Because they, they and they're related. related. So what are you going to mm -hmm. do? Right. Okay. Um, we approve of the, um, the the second boiler room in the ship, but we don't approve of the keel. Main control. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so regarding dates uh, associated with that, there's the ballot question uh, or questions, depending on the recommendation of the Charter Review Committee. Uh, and I think um, this board shares the opinion that it, it should be simplified into one. Secondly, um, to the ballot question, there's a summary that the Charter uh, Review Committee is to prepare that accompanies the uh, actual ballot question. Yeah, I thought town council had to prepare. Had to prepare well, that. my reading was there were three. There's the ballot question, there's the summary yeah. that's prepared by the review committee, and then there's the description of the summary, which is written by town council. It, it was my reading of it, but if you read it different, that's why I wanted you to read yeah, it. No, it, it's um, the town council is going to write the article. And no. He, he's going to write the description. We're, what I've read in printed out here, and I, sh I should have made a copy for you, in, in section 11. Um, set forth here a brief summary of its basic provisions. All right. Uh, the Charter Commission shall prepare the summary of its proposal, its own proposal yeah. for questions here. Um, and Town Council shall prepare the description of proposed amendments. If town council writes a description in the same way that he advised the gentleman that spoke earlier, mm -hmm. that the town council said that they were both right, um, <laughs> I'm a little uneasy with that. But it, it's in the law. What are you going to do? So, Peter, take another read at it just to make sure. But my my take is, it, I thought there was a ballot question, which would be prepared by. Um, the BOS uh, or approved by the BOS mm -hmm. as recommended by the Charter Review Committee. The summary uh, which will be prepared by the Charter Review Committee and then the description of the summary. I think they want you to kind of have that third party independent to... What I'm afraid of is that the, that you have the same thing that happened at town meeting when we amended our bylaws. Don't no worry. We're yeah. not making any changes. Yeah, right. there you go. You're going to like it. <laughs> there you go. We're just changing the paragraph numbers. I don't have them all listed there, yeah. all the bylaws, but they're going to be included, even the ones you can't see. I would like to say one thing, though, though, Peter, and this is a point that have, you have brought up before, is that you can get counsel, you can get an attorney to say whatever you, whatever you would pay him or her to say. And, and this, this demonstrates the philosophy that this my office has that this town hall has at least currently anyways and, and council has actually mentioned it to me saying that a lot of towns do come and say I need this opinion how do I get there hmm. when I propose um, issues to council I propose the issue and I let the chips fall where they may and yeah. so his answer is absolutely reflective of that and so I think on the one hand while it's while it's frustrating I just since you brought it up I think on the other hand, it's not necessarily a bad sign. We're not fishing for the convenient, the good, the answer. We're, I want the right answer, what, what, whichever way it goes. All right, and that's something that could have been directed. Well, you that's how, you that's how it should be. You got the right answer that you wanted, right? No, I didn't want an answer. I asked you him did. for an opinion. And he said they're both right. He gave me his best So you can opinion. understand these people being upset. Absolutely, I told them I can understand them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't tell him what I wanted. I wanted to know what his opinion was on it. Yeah. And that's what his opinion was. That's the best legally defensible position, and that's what the town is interested in. No. So you know, I'll just you know what they say about that. I just want to say I think that's not necessarily a bad thing when you got someone who comes down. Maybe they should hire Patrick and he can go to court and argue with himself. All right, back to the schedule. Uh, the, the other thing I caught in here. Um, was 35 days prior to the election, it has to be filed with the town clerk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we back that off of the date of 521, that puts us at 16th. April 16th. Around there, yeah. Around April 16th. Um, 
and then two weeks before the election, the final report, which was given prior to town meeting in the fall, has to be distributed out two weeks prior to all the residents, to one per household. Uh, I would recommend that we consider including the ballot question, the summary, and the description at, in addition to the final report. So when people get to the ballot box, they're not conf overwhelmed. That would be helpful, yes. Um, Jay, just to clarify your question, that S Section 11 does, the question of adopting or revising a charter mm -hmm. um, as recommended by a charter commission shall be considered, submitted as a single question unless the report recommends um, subdividing. Pr pr provide so the Keep in commission mind, does we have don't that. have a commission. commission we have a committee and right. there's a, the two are different review, right. review. yeah a review committee which is a separate can of worms on this whole and the commission mm -hmm. is elected correct and um oh, they were appointed. And have to be given a budget right. yeah they, a, and, and so on and so forth but, but we all don't the have that. all the rules that we're following within here are based on the commission's rule but we don't know to what extent those things apply to, to a, a committee. committee. You see, that's the thing. Well, this, we are also working on the recommendation of the Office of yeah. Community Development Community or Housing. Development, which right. They're the ones who, yeah, I know. unfortunately. I know. Okay. And so even though they acknowledged that we, we didn't follow the proper procedure, and they said, well, that's okay. You know, this is what the law says. You didn't do it, but that nah, don't worry about it. Well, the law says we should have been a commission, <laughs> not a committee. Yeah. But our charter says we should be a committee. For amendments, actually, who, that who should be a commission? Uh, according to MGL, what should be a commission? To review the, the charter, yeah. you, you should be a commission. You should. No, you can do it by committee too. If you are only if you are changing the legislative body, yeah. the nature of the legislative body. If you want if to you're change not changing the legislative body, you can proceed as a committee. Well, that's what they're doing. Yeah, aren't they? Okay. In an offhanded way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. basically. That's right. Okay. So moving on. We've got all the dates. Tracy, we can get work together to get a calendar to be published. All right. I'd like to get through this without making any mistakes this time. I'm with Bruce. Or perceived mistakes. Okay. Wait for new business. Uh, let's just skip over the meeting minutes for now. And Sean, let's, if you've got an issue that involves the residents that are still here, why don't we get into the town manager update and we'll revisit the meeting minutes shortly uh, after. Can we okay, have, take uh, that out of order. Okay, we're going to have okay. member okay. issues too, because I got some member issues. Yeah, yeah, okay. we'll, we'll go back to let's, that. Let's go to people that wait first. Okay. Uh, these are the, the McKinnons here. I just, um, in, in light of previous discussions we've had and um, you know regarding use of town council I'm not sure if the board can actually vote on this tonight but um, um, the McKinnons have been have had a, a neighbor with nuisance roosters for quite quite a few years now since since two, 2007 um, most recently um, the Board of Health uh, initiated a legal action through housing court um, against the McKinnons neighbor um, that particular <laughs> that particular effort didn't um, didn't go well. Partially, I think, because the 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 board of health, I think, just wasn't the the town isn't accustomed to bringing legal action. I think against many residents. Um, the, there's a, there's definitely a problem in this town where we have whether it's a bylaw or a board of health regulation. Or something like that, and a resident violates that that reg, reg, regulation. How how do we enforce it? And there, the town really doesn't have um, a lot of enforcement power. There have been sure various, we have. There has been various. We can write letters and we can threaten. No, 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 no. We can we can go to court. But the, it's not something that has been done very often. And the housing court issue with with this particular yeah. area of town did not resolve the McKinnon's I I issues. And so, from what I can tell, from what uh, Denise Del Delanoy, the concert, uh, sorry, the Board of Health Administrator, um, she doesn't have standing to bring this action in court again. And the chair of the Board of Health doesn't seem to be uh, confident uh, that he can he can accomplish this. Um, that's so that, that, that's not made, that's not the issue. The request has been made that we that we 
um, retain counsel Absolutely. in this area? The, Represent the town to the, the aggrieved that. parties can go to court on their own. They, they don't have to spend any money. They go to the magistrate and say, I want a complaint issued for, you know, for nuisance, for neighbors. They're, they're depriving me of the quiet enjoyment of my property. The magistrate will make a decision as to whether it should go before the judge. He'll notify the other party if they want to be heard. If they want to be heard, he'll listen. Uh, if he still thinks there's an issue there, uh, he'll mark it up for trial before a judge. It's I'm just very asking you, what, to what level do we want the town to be involved? Well, wait, let, me, let me finish now. Right. Prior to the bylaw changes that we made in 08, uh, in the residence areas, you could only have chickens and, and other animals with approval from the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. That's gone now. When I put on the new bylaws, that's, that's gone away. <coughs> Now, there's a Board of Health regulation that says if you want to have animals, um, you need Board of Health permission. But household pets are excluded from that. And the contention of the neighbor in this case is that their, their chickens, their pet chickens, are in fact household pets. They live You're in the cellar. talking about solar, chickens or roosters? Uh, roosters. roosters. Okay, that's fine, but uh, the problem is... Pant little ones. Granted, the fact that the, whether we characterize them as pets or not, the problem, I think, has gone beyond just the fact that there are roosters in an unauthorized area. We have a nuisance here. Wait a so minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're no longer unauthorized. Under the new bylaws, there's no mention of that. That's gone now, you see? And that, that was an issue. That, we but can't... It's the Board of Health regulation. That's what no, we're no, no. talking about. No, 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 zoning. And the Board of Health thing, it excludes household pets. And that's a judicial decision that has to be made. I can't, I'm on the Board of Health. And I can't make a, if there were 50 chickens or 50 roosters, I can say these aren't household pets. But there were two of them at the time. Um, they reside in the cellar most of the time. And sometimes they, they put in a little cage outside, a cage this big. So is it a household pet or not? That's something to be properly decided by a judge. Even if it is, let's just concede the fact right now that these are pets. Yes. They're still constituting a nuisance to the neighbor. Yes. Which is again But it's not a board of health nuisance. It is. It's the next regulation. Yes, it is. No, 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 no. Number five. No. Yes. I know what the right It says right. It says nuisance. Right. But it's not a board of health nuisance. If there was a lot of, you know, uh, droppings along the yard and so forth, even if it were dog droppings and so forth, that could be a board of health nuisance. So noise isn't a board of health nuisance is what you're saying. Um, it's hard to make the case. A judge may be, be able to make the case, you see? But as far as a board of health goes, um, is my health affected? No. Sure it is. We have the same thing with dogs. Lack That's of right. Sleep. You know? That's right, lack of sleep. Anything may I say that, that I called the animals? town today? Can you just uh, state your name? Joan McKinnon, 30 Brown Terrace. I'll write it in. Um, I called the town today and I again quoted and asked what resident I was in, and it's B residential. Right. And anyone that goes beyond before the board, they have to have so much land. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have that much land, they have to go before the zone um, and ask them, the ZBA, if they can have roosters or whatever. That's and it, and she told now. me it costs $400, they have to come in. I was told this today. She was wrong. I'm telling you, she's wrong. She's then why doesn't everyone to have the their 2008 bylaws? Well, to me, it's a nuisance. It's it constitutes a nuisance. I mean, I, I I don't live on a farm. You might live on a farm. Someone else might live on a farm. I don't live on a farm. When my windows are open and it wakes me up five six in the morning, then you know they were in the cellar. And I recall you going there and checking on them and you calling me last spring and saying I went there. I saw them in the house. Yes. They weren't making any noise, but I heard the dogs barking. Yes. Well, ever since, every, every so often when I have called the town, mm -hmm. she hides them in her cellar. But ever since they went to court, it was, it was September, correct? 
She has had them out since. They never go back in her house again. She figures she can get more and more roosters now. There's at least two, if not three, roosters crowing every day. That's not a family pet when you have farm animals outside in cages. That's not inside the house. To me, a pet, if you can have a pet, especially a rooster, it should be in the house, not outside bothering the neighbors. I don't have, I have little dogs. I don't want them bothering my neighbors. I shouldn't be bothered by anybody else's pet either. Mrs. McKenna, I'm not denying at all that they, they constitute a nuisance to you. I'm not denying that. Well, I'm a what taxpayer. Am, yes. What I am saying is I can't make a board of health nuisance out of that. Y you can go. It doesn't cost you. You don't have to pay a penny. You don't have to do anything. Yes, you go you to the magistrate's office. Only the towns the, go for free. Anybody yeah. else filing a complaint has to pay. Well, if it's 20, it maybe it's $20. Well, so uh, but well, I've been dealing with the town to since 2007, and they kept telling me she cannot have these animals, and they would tell her she cannot have these animals. They have sent her letters telling her they're going to take her to court. They take her to court, and then we find out, because I wasn't there, that I didn't know I had to be there, and the wrong person from the Board of Health took her, and you were there in that yep. court, I was told, yep. but you didn't even back up your board members, from my understanding. They told me this themselves. You didn't even back up your Board of Health members. What is that about? We're supposed to abstain? What was I, what was I supposed to back them up with? I went to that property more than half a dozen times because your complaint was a bark all times of the day. Absolutely. I went there. I saw the chickens. I never once heard the chickens. They're not uh, chickens, roosters, they're roosters. Sorry, roosters. Make a sound. Roosters I heard crow. the dogs. So I'm going to go up in front of the judge, say, yes, Your Honor, I went to that address and I saw two roosters. I have them noise. right no. here. I have them Come on, on roost, a tape player. Roosters crow. I Everybody have roosters crowing on this tape player from her house, from my bedroom window. Would you like to hear them? I, I, I've heard the tape. You haven't heard this tape. I've never played this I've tape heard before. I've the other tapes. We have other tapes of things. Of hers? I've I don't know. I've never, I've never know. played the Roosters tapes. That anyone. That constitute evidence. Well, you what? So if I can interject here, isn't going to get involved <laughs> in every neighbor dispute. But we're going to spend a lot of money. Exactly. And I have that's why when you have to where I, I need to. Again, this is a policy-making board here. I need a little bit of guidance here because it's my job to try and help the residents, right? So at what point do we bow out of this? And does it become the resident's response? Sorry, sorry, Tracy. Does it become the resident's responsibility? The only, I'm just trying to figure this out because I want to do right by her, but I want to do right by the board as well. Sean, the only board that has the right to go after anybody when there's a violation of the census, the sight, the nose, the hearing, that's controlled by the Board of Health. And if they can't do it, then you get the town council. Well, what can town council do? Well, apparently, uh, That's what the I'm courts have changed in well, the sense that council. they don't necessarily accept somebody just walking in and saying, from the Board of Health, this is a nuisance, and yada, yada, yada. They want the lawyers there. But if I can't, if the town, on, you're suggesting that the town can be a party to this, but Mr. We can. Peter it can we, be. Yes. Based on what law, then? How, I'm trying to advise her. How do we? Why if we were to hire it? town council, what? Why are we, haven't you resolved it in all the time that she's been down there? No, I'm. I, I'm, I'm she's serious. She's never here. been down. She, she's called, but she never went to court. I have never heard the roosters. Never. You don't know. Wayne went. went what about the one he, you took home? He did hear it. Taylor Rooster. Didn't you take one home? No, I didn't take one. You home. didn't take one rooster no, off of the property? No, I didn't take any rooster off. I can hear it. <laughs> well, if you hear, out hear the rooster, Bruce, Bruce, you can testify. But I can't testify, and I won't testify that I heard something if I didn't hear it. I'm not asking you to. I'm not asking you to. If, you know, and I was asked before, Wayne Tucker, he said, anytime you hear those roosters, call me. So one day he came over, yeah. sat in my driveway, and he heard the roosters. Yeah. Okay? You were not there. Right. But when you did go, they were in the cellar. They put, maybe they don't, you know, crow in the no, cellar when it's done. No, they were outside one time. They, they didn't make any sound. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they do. But I have to say, Mr. Bagdasarian, a lot of times they do. I don't dispute that. Right. Thank I you. I don't dispute that. Thank you. What are you Appreciate disputing, that. Peter? Why, why do you... Why do you not want to 
do the easiest thing. Well, my easiest thing was to call a town. They always said to me, she can't have them. We're going to call her and tell her she can't have them. No one ever advised me, except for the past year, that it's going to go to court. The town told her she was going to go to court, okay? No one ever told me I could go to court. So to me, I feel like I've invested my time in the town with the town saying they're going to help me tell her to get rid of her. You know what I mean? So now, what do I do? Now, I have to go to the courts. I feel that the town has invested their time with me. I feel like the town needs to help me now. I, I disagree a little bit because when we first started talking, I did tell you you could take care of this yourself, whether it was hiring a lawyer or going to court. We did, did have that discussion. I said because you have a personal cause of action. She's, uh, she's interfering with the quiet enjoyment of your home or whatever. That's, that's, a, tort, that's a civil case. So I did mention to you that that was an avenue you could take, all right? But I, I said also, and it was my understanding that the town can also do something here, but let's be clear that I think you right. were advised right. on at least one occasion. But right. not everybody is matters. prepared to go in front of a judge in, in the courtroom and uh, as, a, as a citizen and, and put in a complaint and get some results. You know that as well as I do. You, they'll I'm just saying they'll that kick I, a right out and get a lawyer. Right, absolutely. No. So I'm not denying I need it. Some I need some guidance too because She's I don't know. For some help. The, the help is go to the. I'll go with you if you want. I'll go there to court go. with you. I'll, you know, I'll we'll go in and I'll show you what to do. I'm not going to be a lawyer, but I'll go with you and we'll talk. You make an appointment with the magistrate and you can tell your story. And the magistrate will send a letter to, the, to your neighbor saying that we have a request that a complaint be issued for noise and if they want to be heard the judge will the magistrate will hear their side of the story if they don't want to be heard then he'll issue a complaint and you go before the judge both of you will be notified when you, you, you tell your story to the judge personally you don't need a lawyer you don't need anything you tell your story the other person tells their story how long has this been going on? Since 2007. Five. She's lived there since 2005. Excuse me? Six years? Yes. I think they should get flared up long before this. I think you ought to take Peter's advice, take him up on that, and let him go down with you to the court and speak to the uh, magistrate. And if that doesn't work, then, then we'll have to go to plan B. Let him, but let him try to take care of it. If he can't do it, then we'll give you the lawyer. Which is to get a definition of what is a, what is a pet. No. Oh, sorry. No. Sorry. No, no, sorry. That's okay. the thing. Yeah. Uh, what, what is the definition of a uh, noise? Household pet. Uh, That's health right. Issue a nuisance. Related, a nuisance, nuisance yeah. related to noise and health. Yeah. 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 But I would I would pursue the first route first. And so then on a Thursday when the housing court is there. This Thursday. No, no, you don't have. To, no, 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 you don't have to go to housing. Court. Clerk and magistrate you isn't isn't housing. You can go to the regular court. It doesn't have to be a um, doesn't have to be housing court. Oh, because they were again. You seem to know more than I do because I, again, I, oh, my frustration is I talk to I get a different story from somebody yeah. I talk to. So. Well, you you yeah. can go to housing court if you want, but you can you can go to the regular court. When I did evictions, I never used housing court because I knew the procedures of the district court, so I use that. So if you go down, I know they work pretty quick. You should get your hearing within a couple of weeks. I mean, it doesn't take a long time. So. With the clerk of courts? Peter will yeah. go with you. Yes. Yes, you go yeah. see Take him up in court. his office. Tomorrow morning. Um, I don't know about tomorrow morning because of the, the weather conditions, but um, later in the week, yes. Okay. Um, what's your number? My 508. Okay. And if this doesn't go well, then, like I said, we'll plan B. Then we'll go the more obviously like difficult legal, legal other way, whatever lawyer's way. Okay. Your Thank story's you. compelling, and this is—I I don't disagree with what he's saying because this is your chance. This is what you want. You want a chance to tell your story to somebody who, unlike me, might be able to actually do something. Right. Right. A right. judge. Correct. Right? And that's what you want. Someone who's got some a little more horsepower than anybody sitting at this table does. So, okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks for your patience and waiting. I appreciate yes. it. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sorry you had to wait that long. If 
If we knew, we could have taken you. Ton of other things, just a lot of sort of pending business. I believe the uh, we did just sort of business of note the um, settlement agreement between the planning board and Heckler Street Farm Group, the old Deborah North versus the planning board. There was a settle settlement agreement reached, it's been filed with, with the court. Um, <clears throat> so, what else? The fire escape. I think Jay, you'd ask me to give an update on the fire escape over at yep. the over at the li library. Still waiting on the recommendations from the structural engineer. I think we're hoping though, based on the nature of the fire escape as well as the paint and plaster and all that kind of stuff inside, that this could end up being an, an insurance matter, right? And not a capital issue, which is kind of nice. Good. Right, so for a thousand dollar deductible. Um, there was some discrepancy between some of the uh, estimates that Jane had submitted to the capital committee in uh, an estimate that the insurance adjuster gave us. So we're trying to track, track those down now and see what actually is going on. We did get an F and, uh, one estimate for conversion <laughs> of the town hall um, from oil to gas. Yeah. It's pretty high. What was pretty high? The estimate. No, I know that, but what was the 35,000. How much? 35. Okay, question. Which How much are we paying for? Paying for oil on a regular basis. On an we, basis. based on a thirty-five, if we, if we were to spend the thirty-five thousand, we're looking at um, recouping our payment in four years. That's not a bad return no. on investment. No. It's not. Now that's thirty-five thousand. We haven't done. We haven't gotten any solid answers from National Grid yet regarding what we anticipate are going to be some taxes. There's got to be some sort of rebates or tax breaks out there for conversion. Um, the only other thing I would uh, think about is. Uh, at third 35,000 we don't really have the money right um, but um, I think if we could get it knocked down to closer to you know between 10 and 15 I think it would be something and then, then we're talking a 18 month repayment re can, can we get some when they gave you the estimate did they break it down as to the components in, that make yeah it, it was fair, fairly detailed I can certainly pass it on okay. an estimate to you well that begged the question um, how much more would it be just to replace the boilers rather than just convert what we have now, right? So it sort of makes you wonder, do you want to go in with all new stuff or do you want to replace, do you want to upgrade the old stuff? What do you mean? Th those boilers are new. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four or five years now. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, we, so we need by, oh, you're talking about most converting. boilers are the guts. Yeah, the conversion okay. process itself. Yes. Okay. Um, for the boilers, converting the boilers downstairs to from oil to gas. Okay, converting the burner. The burners, yes. The burner from oil to gas. Yes. Everyone I've talked to says that the, you know, you can change the burner, yes. But everyone I talk to tells me that you suffer a big reduction in efficiency because the, now the fellas that came from the gas company, they poo-pooed that. They said, no, you know, Heat is heat, um, so I, I don't I don't know that part of it. So I like if if they're considering just the thirty five how much thirty five thousand. That's an estimate from one company. Yeah, um, but burners themselves don't cost a lot of money. So I'm interested in knowing what else makes the component of sure you get that thirty thirty thousand. You sent um, it to the whole board. Sorry? Send it out to the whole sure. yeah, Please. We just got it today, so. Um, the the only idea. other thing uh, I guess I really want to mention was, as you know, the work is sort of ongoing out at the Larkin building. Um, yeah. And so there, there was currently um, conservation has put in a cease and desist order as well as the building inspector. <laughs> Some of the sandbags were put on the wrong side of the culvert, basically. Um, they're do from what the Conservation Commission is telling me, they're doing good work down there. They're just... Um, they're changing, they're, having, they're finding the need as we f figured would happen in a j operation of this nature that they're starting to have to change their plans as they move along. And what they're not doing is they're this particular, you know, the condo association or whatever isn't great about letting conservation know what changes it has and then letting conservation amend its orders of condition. So, um, so the 
building inspector has approved and work continues on the footings actually underneath the building, but there's nothing else going on regarding the dewatering operations. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like there's probably gonna be some injunctive injunction going on with that work as well, because the Crown and Eagle actually appealed the order of conditions put forth by the Conservation Commission. So it looks like there's, there's gonna be another issue to develop, so. And, and, and what's, what's Crown and Eagle's issue? Well, Crown and Eagle, I think, is afraid that that the Larkin building is gonna end up sealing up their side altogether so the Crown and Eagle will not realize any water flow. Okay. However, one of the orders of conditions for the, uh, that, the, that the Conservation Commission put forth was they wanted a 24 inch pipe, if at all possible, if 24 wasn't possible, at least a 12 inch pipe. So no one, the problem is what they're noticing now is there's, a, there's three, four feet of sediment. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's basically gonna happen in order for the Larkin building, because it owns 99% of the sluice way coming up to yeah. the Hartford Ave, it's gonna need to dredge out its, yeah. its sluice way. If it does that, then there's not, because right now we don't know how deep the sludge is yeah. in, in the pipe underneath. The, you know, the, we haven't been able to see the connection between the private pipes and the town's yeah. pipes. Well, Crown and Eagle has riparian rights, right? right? So, but just on a small part, and they're worried about stagnant water and mosquitoes yeah. and all that other kind yeah. of stuff. Now, Larkin has supposedly said, but we don't want to cut the. We're not trying to dam this up. We want to keep keep the water yeah. flow going. But I think there's just um, there is a bit of bit of an issue there. So now. Right. How is a town involved in that aspect? The of town it? isn't right now. See, this okay. is what, what happens. The engineers for Mumford want to wait on the dredging portion. They want to wait until the town is ready to repair the culvert and the bridge right at East Hartford. And I, okay. the reason I think they want to do that is because then the town will actually do the dredging portion of that. I think it's, it's sort of a cost-saving sa measure. But why would the town do dredge an area. They'll have to dig it out in order to replace the culvert and all that kind of stuff. The town will have to do that anyways. And so I yes, think it's but just not, but we're going to dig out the section that concerns us. That's right. Not right. that section. But if it's all buried, we'll end up digging out their part of their pipe too, because they're connected <laughs> to each other. Okay. So I think, you know, in the end, it's going to have to get dredged out. And there's no reason why the Larkin folks couldn't just go in and do it. Mm. Um, but I'm just getting the impression, I think they're just hoping maybe the town will be able to absorb some of the work as well. The cost. <laughs> of the cost of the work, <laughs> specifically excavation, yeah. So. But from what I can tell, conservation, they're, they're doing a great job. What little excavation has been done now, they're doing, doing a really good job. It's just very difficult because they've got to somehow dewater that in order to come up with an effective, they need to get to the ground instead of yeah. a soft three feet of yeah. mud, basically, or whatever, yeah. so. Okay. I think that's all right. Before we go to member issues, can we just approve? I'd like to go back to the meeting unless there's something else, Sean. Um, yeah. Approve the meeting minutes from 1 7 2013. So I'll a motion. To approve those meeting minutes dated January 17, 2013. I make a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. Second. All Forward. in favor? All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you. All right. Member issues. Bruce, you had something you wanted yeah. to start? Yeah. Okay. I, I got a couple of phone calls, which kind of surprised me. This is my understanding of what's going on. I got at least, well, I got two phone calls. Hope Pond has a so-called committee, a new committee, which uses the senior center for their meetings. And what I'm worried about is when I come up again, like the uh, garden group, at uh, Sutton Street, where they're using the town's assets, they're using the senior center to conduct their meetings, and they aren't really approved committee. And they have an agenda, they have a meeting, they have votes, 
and they're not a committee of the town. My question is, why are they being allowed to use the senior center for their meetings? Well, different organizations in the town, town can you use town with the approval of whoever's in charge but of the But I thought that, I thought they had to be a town committee. No. Well, not, not, not to use the space, not to use space. Maybe um, just request it. If, if the Boy Scouts might want to meet in the town hall, they can they can do so. To save our soldiers or whatever to yeah. the troop uh, group troops uses town, town hall. Yes, the other thing have was a they're making decisions. They're trying to make the decisions. Here. There was a church who got burnt down. Oh, where right. conservation oh, has, was has the uh, <laughs> it's a conservation decision. I don't think it's a, a decision of this group to be voting on things that. It is. It's a citizens group. It's just a. It's a committee put for a citizens group put for. It's friends of Pout Pond put put together by Dave Lucon. It has. It does not conduct conservation commission business. Mm -hmm. It brings forth. It will bring forward concerns about Pout Pond to the commission to be ultimately. But I think it's just Dave because as ever most people know Dave Lucon has been the driving force behind Pout Pond and I think he's reached out to try and get some help. Mm -hmm. Right, and so this is this is all that is. Yeah. So they, it's they just Dave well, and his I friends. I just understand, you know, yeah. they, they, they we have the friends of the elders that do the same back. for the senior center. They want to vote to bring a camper back. Now, the, the, there's been some problems there. I don't know if this board's aware of it. I'm aware of it. Okay, there's been some problems there. Now they want to vote to bring the same guy back. I, I, no, but I, they can. I, they I they can. You know, they're 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 residents of the town, and they're free to vote on something that they would like to do, and they can forward that request to the Conservation Commission. You know, that's perfectly proper. <coughs> the Conservation Commission has no obligation to fulfill it. To fulfill it. it. Yeah. Um, and if, if Lucon is a member of that group, you would probably abstain from a vote on proving it. You know, I don't know. But, um, no, but there's, there's no, nothing wrong with groups using the town facilities. I don't. I don't see anything wrong with the group. I just got a problem with it's not being aired. Nobody sees yeah. it, and they want to take a vote, and they want to bring this guy back. There's been problems there. No, I know. You know None of their votes have any have any authority. Okay, well, I just don't want to. Their, you know, you know, you know, there's problems there. It, you know, and I think this summer we better pay, pay better attention to what's going on down there. Well, we're already we're already and, working uh, on it. We've been working on it for a couple 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 months. So okay. we're starting to let it All right. this year. I still have a concern about the issue with the house, the rental of the house and this this deal arranged with somebody. I don't know what the status of that is, but it just doesn't Well I'm, I'm, it's I, still on hold because we've recognized there have there are some problems. There's it, been some this, Yeah. It's not imminent. I just want to make sure every you people are aware that there are, you know, meetings going on. They yeah. want to bring a camper back, mm -hmm. and basically the guy was removed from the property. Yeah, I know. I and yeah. you know, I just want to stay out of trouble here. I don't want to see us get in a pile of trouble when we shouldn't. I just, Touché. you know, I just want to make sure it's being taken care of. That's all. Mm -hmm. All right. What else you got? Uh, you want me to go over the meeting I attended, or? Yeah, would you I'll do, do that. that? Okay. I attended the Mosquito Control Project meeting, which really wasn't for the town of Oxbridge. It was really a CMMPC meeting with a 10 or 15 minute section that went over con con mosquito control, and then I had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't get into their budget, whatever they were doing, or anything like that in their meeting. But what I did bring back. Wait a minute now. This is a public meeting of a public body, and they wouldn't let you stay? This really wasn't a public meeting. Oh. It, it was It was a CMMPC meeting. It wasn't. Well, that's it, this, a public just, body. Yeah, yeah but but this private club on it the was, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't meant to be there. They were pretty surprised to see anybody there from any town except. Yeah. You know, but yeah, who was that's supposed how those to be there? Go. What I did bring back, <laughs> though, is an invite, I guess. <laughs> what I did <laughs> I bring back ask. is a survey they had of the mosquito program. It'll go in the reading file. Nice colors. Yeah, and like uh, the basic uh, presentation they gave that was a big deal too. Yeah. 
And uh, the prices which concerned me, that's what my biggest concern was the prices. And uh, I brought back uh, the, the data they uh, gave out to each town or the members of that meeting. We did have, we did lose one person in Westboro over the mosquito problem. Somebody did die in yes. Westboro. Yes, yeah, we did. But basically, it was a quick presentation, what they use, when they do it, the, nu the numbers and everything else. I put it all in the reading file, it was very quick. And my biggest question was, how come we're paying so much money compared to these other towns that have big money? But and the answer, the was? answer was the area of the town. Right. The size, it wasn't the population of the town more than it was the area. Mm. That's why you'll see like places like Upton and Milford paid less, than, most of them paid less than us, but in area wise, they weren't as big as us. Well, we got three rivers going through too. True, true, which, you know, that's one of the reasons why you do it. Has tributaries and off, we have thousands of um, uh, mosquito breeding grounds, otherwise known as retention ponds, mandated mm. right, by the right. Conservation Commission. Well, they did. They did find some positive testing down on Capering Street. By the way, it's yes, in they there. Did. Yeah. So you know, it was a quick meeting, and I was supposed to be just at that part of it. Okay. And that was it. Thank you, Bruce. You're welcome. I didn't mind going. All right. Tim, uh, you got anything for us? Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, it's really, really icy. Oh. <clears throat> Should I tell us something? Okay. <laughs> Wrap it up, is that what you're saying? I took yeah. the executive mobile today, so I'm all set. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Tim, I s have you circulated this to everyone? Or did I just get a copy? I believe I did, yeah. Okay. What uh, is it? I gave it to Tracy, I think she put it in the uh, mail box. Okay. What's that? Uh, it's just an uh, action item that Tim had to follow up on, on the onboarding of the selectmen. A new select. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he okay. started the drop. Yeah. I think yeah. we all should just take a look at it and continue to build okay. off it. I appreciate getting a head yeah. start. So moving along quickly. So that's Tim's. Uh, how was the MMA conference, Tim? It was pretty good. Pretty good. Except that I, when I went to uh, pay at the garage, it was a little bit of a yeah. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it cost you a little bit there? Cost, uh, cost well, more than a hotel. It wasn't so much that. The guy gave me. I gave him a fifty for a thirty-six dollar yeah. bill. You know, that was thirty-six dollars. Mine was a hundred. Mine had four at once. <laughs> and I drive it out and looked and oh, oh no. jammed on the brake. I back yeah. up, standing there with two fives. I, I think he gave me a fifty. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Peter. Did you have anything that you wanted to bring? Just, just a quick question. Uh, sure. Uh, you talked about. I thought somebody did about the search. So we can search our bylaws, some new program, yeah, which, was... which would be excellent. But we've got to make sure in all these things that we put a disclaimer that, you know, this is not the official version. The official version is at the town clerk's yeah. office. Okay. I've got a couple of disclaimers for the website in general that I'm working on. I'll probably have those done okay. in a couple of weeks. Okay. Because okay. we need a general disclaimer on there as well. Yeah. So. Informational use only, right? Well, some it's official, but I think it just, um, yeah, for. Uh, I well, think we do our best to make it official, make it but official. sometimes laws change. <coughs> there's Excuse posting, me. there's lag time between changes and postings yep. and that kind of thing. So, bless you. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Anything else, Peter? Sorry. Um, on 2 6, uh, Senator, our meeting with Senator Moore, it's going to be at 4 30 here. 4 30. And same time, Koros? Oh, we didn't hear no. Not likely. He, oh, he okay. has. He usually has session on Wednesdays. He oh, okay. He'll let us know on that day. If not, he may be in at seven. I've got a. I haven't gotten an official response from his office okay. yet, or from him. So I'll follow up with him this week. But okay. um, definitely more at that time frame, and potentially Kevin either during that time frame, or at seven o'clock that night, or completely the other day. It's still yeah. up, up in the air with him. And so we have these limited time because we have, from what five to, well, four thirty to five thirty. Okay, okay, one hour. He is off so we got to keep moving, moving things along. Right. And he he is here for office hours. Yeah, I know. So I know that. We could probably spill into a little bit. Yeah. Of it. But I know he has. A, he's actually leaving yeah. office hours. I think early that night, anyways, because he has another uh, a commitment that night that he has to go to. But 
Um, and then you'll notice tonight the fire suppression <coughs> was not on the list um, to talk to about the hookup fee. Um, that's my fault. I got to get a little more research uh, done on that before I can present something to you guys that I think is, is uh, reasonable to look at. Uh, I just want to follow up too on training on the KBS system. Everyone got their training or into the system. We can get access to the reports now. Working out now? No. I don't, it's not on that. We're just looking for them to get the um, icon on the desktop. Okay. Oh, they haven't done that yet? No. Get that done this week. Absolutely. All right. Icons are made in China. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so with that, um, I think if we feel like we can get in, we can access to the information, and we should. We sh we uh, had said we were going to start to look at the 2015 budget in earnest. Um, so I'll send out an email later this week, and um, I had a couple ideas uh, on on where we might start looking at a, a particular department at a time and I think trying to poke through that. Speak, speaking of the budget, mm -hmm. um, even though we're not taking an active part in this year's budget or the following year's budget, town meeting authorizes the expenditure of money. Mm -hmm. Town meeting doesn't spend money. Mm -hmm. So nothing prohibits us and I think we need to start seriously thinking about how we, what we're going to do to accumulate some money to address these capital issues. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't make any sense to have a capital planning committee spending all this time and effort and energy unless that we, we commit to, we are going to address this issue and we're going to do it from current revenues. Um, we have 450 acres of industrial land that's vacant. And if you talk to anyone who's involved in helping businesses locate in different towns, you will find that the Uxbridge has a very, very bad reputation. And our bylaws, as you know, I think everybody knows by now, are not conducive to um, good industrial and business development. We have an excellent location but I know the board doesn't want to address the issue of the zoning bylaws, but we really need to. Okay, and what do you mean when you say address the zoning bylaws? You mean look at the table of uses again, compare, benchmark them against what we would perceive to be industry friendly communities? Well, just, just look at it in, in general. We don't need to look anywhere else. We have to look at what we have and identify and say, gee, this is really a, a problem. Mm -hmm. And there are many of those things in there that just um, are designed to, to frighten people. Well, with the upcoming uh, warrant, maybe if we have some low-hanging fruit, we can get them on the table quickly. Say it again. With the upcoming warrant. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Bylaws have to be changed through uh, on the on the five, right? Amendments have to be done on the on the fifth year. No. No. You can make amendments to bylaws anytime. I thought we were having a uh, a bylaw committee on scheduled for the, every five years according to the charter. Um, Section eleven. Forget forget committees of that nature. Mm -hmm. That was a mistake that the charter made with the charter review committee, because when you have a we're going to review this on a certain date. You got a group together, and they feel obligated to come up with some changes, <clears throat> and then they become personally invested in it with their work product. Yep. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. So we can change it on any warrant. You can change any time you want. Mm -hmm. um, I'll follow up with you later, Peter. All right. I'll figure out how to best get that into the agenda. All right. Anyone have anything else before we adjourn? Thank you guys for uh, coming down in the bad weather and following up on all the items. It wasn't bad when we came down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Meeting adjourned.